Welcome to the Thoughtful Gamer Podcast number 99. We're almost to 100, guys. I don't know what We're to almost do. special, but not quite special. This is next the, week. the second most special podcast. Is that how it works? No, I feel it's like we've been doing like 500, 1,000, like... That's fair. Anyways, it's number 99. My name is Mark. Here with me today is Lindsay. Present. And Orion. Hello. And we're down to the final episode of my top 100 games of all time, the 25 best games ever. And we're going to do this one a little bit different uh, because my games in the top 25 are very similar to what I have posted the last three times I've done this because it's very hard to rise up and become one of the greatest games ever made. I invited Orion and Lindsay to come up with their top 25, so it's a triple top 25. Oh my god! Three times the fun. Guaranteed or your money back. I don't know what Orion and Lindsay have chosen. I have very strong guesses for many of them. Uh, I think Orion's and mine will look fairly similar. Uh, I think Lindsay's will be much more party game focused, which is very exciting, actually, because uh, we don't do a ton of party game stuff at the Thoughtful Gamer. Lindsay's like our party game specialist. I would say so. Yeah. And trick-taking, too. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to go through mine pretty quickly, because again, it's a lot of games that you all, if you've listened to any of these before, we have talked about them, and also they're like generally a lot of our favorite games, so we've talked about them a lot anyways. So yeah, we'll do we'll do a triple one. Let's start at number 25. This one I will give a shout out to, because this is the highest riser on this section of the list. It moved up 23 spots from last time where it was number 48 number 25 for me is battle line and this is another pandemic game because this is the game amber always chooses to play every single time she wants to play battle line i don't think i've ever played this game yeah so it's it's similar ideas lost cities no i mean in that it's a what i call a column fighter where you're playing cards to a column but it's uh it's combined with like poker hands so you're trying to create good poker hands in your columns instead of just trying to go in in ascending order and it's more thinky there's there's more depth to it compared to lost cities or other other games of this type yeah it's it's really good it's my favorite column fighter or as dan Thoreau calls them shot and tots because the game on top so is that like a classic game that's in this style or something well it is it is battle line but Okay. It's, Shot and Tot is battle line with one fewer card in each suit that was given. I assume oh, is that one to nine then instead of it's one, to one ten? through nine instead of one through ten. Otherwise, is an identical game, but was printed by a different publisher. I think it has to do with the complex web of publishing and you know different countries: Europe, America, Asia the rights therein and so maybe battle line was locked in because i think battle line came out first technically although i think they both came out in the year 2000 uh so maybe battle line was locked in but it didn't get full distribution to all the world so he slightly altered it enough gave it to a different publisher and then they got it wider i don't know i think it was probably something like that because they're basically the same game but shot and tots uh, sounds funny uh, the, the game is called Shot and Totten, and I think it's about I don't know. There's like a it's like a ca- caricature of a Scottish guy on it. I, I don't understand. Anyways, Battle Lines the copy I have, and it's a very very good game. Let's go to Lindsay's. What's your number twenty five? Werewolf One Night. Ooh, I've never actually played this version of of Werewolf. So I one also night, have two copies. One of Night well Ultimate Werewolf, the Bezier one. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is that the first one they did of the One Night series? There's just like three or four games in this One Night series. Oof. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I'm not... Let's see. I'm wondering which one I'm referring to. I would imagine it's Ultimate. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely Ultimate. Um, I'm not sure if this is the first one that they've done in the series, but I, I've just always really enjoyed playing this game. I like that it's a short format. I do like the games where it's round by round and someone kind of gets out and then you know, those kind of things. But I think this is the best way to play Werewolf so that everyone can still participate and still have something to do. And I like that there you can make it as complex as you want or simplify it to as little degree as possible so that even like people who don't love games super much would be so willing to play this. But you can also add in variety if you want to spice things up and you can play it in a short time frame. So I do like that. There are some aspects of this game that I don't like. I think some of the tokens 
are a little bit weird and mess with the mechanics a little bit. So I think I like playing a little bit more of a baseline version of this, but Deception games are going to be very frequent on this list for me, and I love them. Yeah, uh, I looked at One Night Ultimate Werewolf is the first one Bezier did. There was a One Night Werewolf that predated it that they picked up and then turned into One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Okay. But it looks like One Night Werewolf was maybe only released in Asia, maybe. Anyway, so it is the first one. Okay. Yeah, I haven't yeah, played I think it. they made like a vampire version after, but yeah, super fun. Also have two copies. Happy to bring it over. Orion has thoughts. Uh, is it One Night Ultimate Werewolf or Two Night Ultimate Werewolf? One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Okay. Okay. Yeah, how does that work? Uh, my... I'm very curious. I've never actually understood how this game functions. So, so it's like five like... minutes. So you have one night, so someone's killed. It's like werewolf, someone's killed, and then the... No. You figure it out and the game's over? No, there's no one killed. So it's five minutes. You have a you get an app and then they tell everyone to go to sleep and stuff like that. Werewolves figure out who each other are. Um, then there's various other roles that you can do, you know, various sure. other roles that do. And they wake up and figure out who they, you know, figure out maybe who they are or if they want to save someone or whatever. And then everyone goes to sleep and then you have five minutes to figure out who is who. So no one actually dies so much as like you're just trying to determine who's doing who's doing what huh. based on information that you have. And discussing and talking and deception. And it's only five minutes long. Weird. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't seem like you it would play work. it sometime. But I, I would I definitely want to play it. Sorry, Ryan, go we ahead should. with yours. My number twenty five is War of the Ring. Very Ooh, nice. I don't know this one. Most excellent. It's the Lord of the Rings board game. It's the Lord of the Rings two player war game. <laughs> it is it is all of Lord of the Rings in a board game. It's it's so good. Yeah, the, the the series Lord of the Rings, not the entire history of the world. <laughs> the story of Frodo, this, basically. The book, going, yeah, the main book. That, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's great. Very thematic, asymmetrical. It's awesome. And each side has two different... There's like two parallel tracks. There's there's like the military, I don't know, map that you're fighting on. And then there's the prog- progression of the ring and the fellowship getting to Mordor. And you can spend actions on you kind of have to decide how you're going to win and spend your actions accordingly but yeah. you also roll dice and you have to drive you have to use what you roll so yeah it's it's really cool we'll talk about that one more later <laughs> the first of many overlaps between mine yeah. and Mark's <laughs> <laughs> we've on my favorite 18xx game presently even though everyone seems to dislike it <laughs> But it's very it's a very me 18xx game, I think. That's 1862. It is very weird. You do have to learn a lot more. So like part of the appeal of 18xx it's, is once you learn 1830, everything is kind of branched off of that. And so typically when you learn a new 18xx game, you're just learning like the differences between it in 1830 or whatever its closest like descendant is that's popular 1862 is very different you have to learn a lot so Mm -hmm. i think people just don't want to put in the effort Uh, but i think it's a blast it's extremely operational so it's much more about figuring out how you're going to lay track where you're going to token and what your train setups are going to look like and so it feels much more like operating a company like a profitable company and making wise business decisions than it feels like you're a rogue hedge fund manager or something with with more of the financial games so i think that's why i like it so much you like this one too right Ryan? oh yeah yeah this is a good one yep, i like this one a lot have you played any 18xx Lindsay? i have not played a single 18xx game i think you guys have told me that i probably wouldn't like them so not that I like wouldn't. You never played actually, like, uh, 46? We never got you to play 46? Not that I'm aware of, but I also have the worst memory on the planet, so it's possible that I played it. And I actually have no one that's slightly simpler, maybe, than 46. Uh, well, maybe not. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it? 18. Seven? No, not 17. <laughs> 17 is very complicated. 60, 61, <laughs> I think. Yeah, the new. This kind of directly defies my like. 2000s rules so i mean even i don't know when the board games are actually created but if even the ga- if the game itself is named below 2000 like this i feel like it's just like is it is even it's worth a lost it? cause the lost cause it's a lost city a shame my 24 is boggle oh i like mm-hmm. boggle i like boggle mm-hmm. yeah no one i know has it except for like parents everywhere you know you yeah, just gotta, i think like, all parents the have this game. a little bit yeah, you're required. You you lose your children if you're not if you do not have a game of Boggle at your house. I'm pretty sure. That's certain. Right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they take them away. But yes, yeah, so, so I just think it's so fun. Um, I love word 
type games. I think I'm really good at these types of games. And I just haven't played it in a long time. But I, every time I, I do it, I really thoroughly enjoy it. And I feel like I learn too while I'm playing based on like what other people are doing. So yeah, I think just simple fun, but good, all in good fun. I have a very distinct good memory of playing Boggle with Amber at some bar. It was either like one of our first dates maybe, or maybe it might have been like on our road trip over to Boston after getting married. It was like very early on Mm -hmm. in either dating or the marriage and I, for some reason, I remember going on that date to that bar and then playing Boggle because they had like Boggle and Sorry, you know, broken down in a corner of the bar. But they, it was like their board game selection. I'm like, I kind of mm. remember Boggle. Uh, and it, we, had a, we had a good time. Yeah, Boggle's solid. Number 24. Hey, Lindsay will like this one. It is The Resistance. Yeah. Oh, still makes it yes. 25. Nice. Still I have makes no the top resistance. 25. No resistance towards this decision. It's uh, it's a really good game. We just, as, as I've said many times before, we played it fifty times, and I kind of got sick of it. Yeah, um, fair enough. But it's an it's a, it's an awesome social deduction game, probably the best in my opinion. Yeah. We also put a lot of effort into creating the right ambiance, and it was an experience. Uh, so sure. that added to the enjoyment. Well, literally, I don't think it's the best social deception game, as you'll see. But oh. um, I do agree that I think it is one of the best social deception games. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, I recommend the soundtrack to The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo well as being excellent background music to create the suspense uh, for this game. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it, that is what we ended up with. And it was perfect because we got to start by all singing their, that cover of The Immigrant Song. And then it goes into creepy yep. ambience music. So it, it's got everything. Everything you could the second piece, want. The second piece is to have a single light bulb hanging from like a wire in the middle of the room. We never the quite light got source. that. Okay. We never quite got that. We talked about it many times. <laughs> if we switch out to metal chairs as well, um, I can bring like handcuffs if you want. Like we can really make this a, a full experience. Oh, yeah. My number 23 is Food Chain Magnate, currently my favorite splatter game. Although I just got the great Zimbabwe. They just reprinted it. And... When I when I saw the announcement for it, and I asked some people, and every single person I asked said it was their favorite Splatter game, so I have very high expectations for it. But right now, it's Food Chain Magnate, uh, which is is just brilliant. It's so good and hilarious. One of the I think Food Chain Magnate is significantly better than Zimbabwe, but maybe it's just the specific play I had of Zimbabwe was not good. Because yeah. one person knew the game inside and out and just went for the most OP strategy and blew the rest of us out. Like, I don't know. It was not even close. Um, so it wasn't a great experience. Yeah, that'll that'll always ruin a game when someone does that. Hopefully, I'll find people to play with it that also don't know what they're doing. And maybe that'll make it more fun. But Food Chain Magnate's great. I love it. Everyone always complains about maybe how it looks. Time. But I think it looks fantastic. It looks like a 1950s diner, which is exactly what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. It is It is not magnetic, in fact, in terms of attraction. The word is magnate, Lindsay. I know. I know. <laughs> you were punning on magnate and went from magnetic? Magnetic. No. No. Magnetic. No. no, no, mm-hmm. no. Nope. I'll, no. All right. I'm trying here. All right. We'll move on to your game. Take it a ride. Just like, just such a classic. I always enjoy playing it. I don't say I would say I haven't played it in a really long time, probably since PAX East when I played it there. But, you know, it's a, it's a game my family really enjoys. And then it has a lot of history and a lot of significance to kind of like me growing up. Just a good game, I think. And super fun. Yeah, it's good. I prefer the Europe one. That's my... I've never played. Oh, you never played the Europe one. I, I think it's a little mm-hmm. better than the original. Yeah, I think the map's better in Europe yeah. because the Rockies kind of... I don't know. Mess up the map. <laughs> yeah. Right. U.S. The U.S. is not a good map for games because you have these like yeah. all the populations on both coasts with like a couple spots in the middle, and there's a big old empty third of it that doesn't do much. Like it's not. Please address your map. complaints to um to great to Great Britain. Just send a letter directly to the to, to the, the British. Queen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think they created yeah, the how dare, of America, but <laughs> yeah, how dare yeah. Napoleon sell us all that land? My number 23, another game that Lindsay will love and is assuredly on her list, Codenames. Ooh, the best word group party game. 
Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that one again soon. We'll we'll definitely be talking about that one again more. Yeah, we can pass. We can pass through. We're gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be reverence again. Number twenty two for me is Space Corp. Full name Space Corp 2025 through 2020, or excuse me, through 2300 AD. I love the superfluous AD at the end of it, since it's a game about exploring space. Uh, It's so fun. I read a review of it recently. It's just a blast. It nails exploration better than almost anything. I love it. Yep. Increasing scope of the game is amazing. Also, it really tied into like the feeling I get from three body problem of like this scope creep throughout the series and it's the same arc like three piece arc from in that uh in that book yeah. or in that game it's also a substantially easier simpler game than people think i think because it's gmt because i don't know it has that presentation of like a simulation type game but do not be afraid it is a midweight game at, at worst it's if you can simple. play a midweight euro, you can play this. Yeah, if you can play Dominion or Castles of Burgundy, you're gonna. That's about where you're, what you're looking at for Space Corp. Lindsay, um, Sidereal Confluence. So we've obviously already talked oh, about yeah. it, but yeah, I thrive in the chaos. So I like this. I like Chinatown as well. But yeah, just yeah, trade me things for more things, and then have everyone yelling at each other. Sounds good to me. Yeah. My ideal night. Although, man, if you, get the, back to wrong, my childhood, you, know? if you get the wrong group of people playing, oh, man, it can be torturous. Oh, yeah. We met, I feel like, oh, I'm the intrigued. Time, yeah, I guess the first time I played. Oh, yeah. Was, <laughs> were you in that game, Orion? No, you told me about it, though. Oh, man. There was like a drunk guy. There was. Well, first of all, you played with eight people, right? Yeah. And it started at like 10 o'clock at night. That's insane. Yeah. How do you how do you all shout at each other? One guy eight? was one guy was wasted. Another, the guy who owned the game, I think it was like his second time playing ever, but then there was a person who who wasn't the owner slash teacher who had played it a lot more than everyone else and no one knew that. It was just the wrong mix at the wrong time, but I still, I still, you know, bought a copy because I saw the potential in it. But yeah, the wrong group shouting at each other can get very bad. 22, Yes, I have a distant plane. Oh yeah. We just talked about this on the last list. Yep. Excellent. Best entry point into coin, I would say. I would agree with that. Yeah. When people ask that question, I know Volko's answer is just pick the conflict that you're most interested in, but there are definitely easier <laughs> and there are more complicated coin games. And I think distant playing is the, the perfect balance of like getting the best of coin at the at the simplest rule set yep. so far. I haven't played all of them. There, there have been new ones that have been released since I last played the most recent, but I, I assume the newer ones are also on the more complex side, you know, as it kind of naturally goes. Number 21 for me is Codenames. It's back. It's back. But I'm sure... It's back in red. I am 100% sure it's going to be higher on Lindsay's list, so we'll save for sure. the discussion for then. What's your number 21, Lindsay? Viticulture. Oh, nice. Yeah, I just really enjoyed We played that game, I think it's more recent in my mind, but we played that game a little bit more recently. I just... I think I'm always a sucker for anything that has a like a wine or food theme. So that's always going to gonna add for me. I will not whine about it. I think it's a great idea. And I just, en- I just enjoy <laughs> this, this type of game. I think there's, I, I, you know, that I enjoy games with like a, a few mechanics that I feel like you can kind of work your, your best option. And then you can kind of play different ways. And I don't know. I feel like this has just enough minimal minimal level of mechanics that i enjoy it but it's complex enough that i also that i also still enjoy it Mm -hmm. yep getting that sweet spot between you know the different types of wine 21 i have food chain magnet (laughs) oh hey heard of her (laughs) great minds think alike very magnet magnetic heard of it that 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 pun is not gonna not gonna work (laughs) now that's a Lindsay. you have a lot of really good puns but that one just it's it's not it's not it it's not there no it's a non-starter Got it. Uh, let's stay on the wine theme for my number 20 is Venus, the superior wine making mm. game. Have you played this one, Lindsay? Which one? Venus. No, I I was wondering if I had, and I was like, no, I played Viticulture. I don't think I played this. I should teach you Venus. Yeah, it's really good. It's my favorite Lacerda game. It's a lot to handle at first, but once you get into it, it's actually somewhat simple. And I know people say that about a lot of games, and I think I probably say it too much, but... It does make sense once you get into it. I, I, I do like Venus quite a bit. Yeah. And it, I mean, I would the time it takes to play the game accelerates rapidly once everyone knows what they're doing. Like a first 
a first play of Venus could be like three hours long, but like a third or fourth play of Venus could be like 45 minutes. Like you can get through it quick. Good stuff. For 20, I have Concordia. Ooh. That's Spoiler, I also have Concordia at 20. Whoa! <laughs> Great mind super think alike. Uh Concordia is a little bit uh a little bit higher on my list. Okay. So we can we can skip yeah. through. Let's 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 move on. My number 19 is War of the Ring, which Orion mentioned earlier. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love it. It's definitely better than Star Wars Rebellion, and it makes me cringe every time I see people treat them like the same game. They are not the same game. They're only the same insofar as they are two-player games about beloved fantasy properties <laughs> that are like about the same weight and length. They're very different like they're very different otherwise. I guess there's both combat in in, in both. There's also asymmetrical combat and a hidden mechanic of searching for the the, the secret thing. But yeah. I'm not arguing that they're the same game. I'm just saying there are some similarities. There are some. Okay. As I say it, there are more similarities. But that's like saying, you know, Venus and Viticulture are the same game. They're not. Right? They just have some similarities. Anyways, Wuthering's the best one, and it's excellent. At 19, I have Newsfjord. So, you know, once again, we already talked about it a bit. But, yeah, always enjoy playing it every single time we do. Would love to play it even more. Nothing fishy about it. Yeah, you're the one that helped me figure out what the herring deck was. Oh yeah, I don't remember. Remember that. remember that in the rule book? It's my favorite rule book. Rule book nugget. Oh yeah, is it says for, it says for your first time use the herring deck. Yeah, and then gives literally no indication of which deck is the herring deck because all three of the decks have a different fish on them, but they all look pretty similar to each other, and you would need to very have a pretty good knowledge of fish to be able to pick out the herring from the mackerel, I think, is the other one that looks very similar to it. Oh, no, I remember. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've, I've since forgotten which one it is. It's one of the silvery ones. There's like two silver ones and one's more brownish. Mm -hmm. But yeah, <laughs> nowhere in the rule book does it identify which deck is the herring It just deck. expects you to understand fish. Like, if you're playing <laughs> yes. this game, you better know, okay? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Number 19, I have Terra Mystica. Oh, there you go. Orion and my list so. being somewhat similar once again. Yeah, Terra Mystica is great. Yeah, I mean, I think every game on my list is in your top 100 or maybe in your top 50. So, yeah, there we go. Mine is, this, is not the, this is not the case for me. Number 18 for me is Suburbia. This one got a 10-place mm. bump from last list, uh, I think because we've played it. This is when I've gotten to the table a couple it's more times, game. and it's fantastic. I don't know if I love it with the expansion that we have or that Matt has because it's his copy of the game. The expansion adds the borders, which I like quite a bit, but it also dilutes the hex pool. So it makes some of the interactions really wonky, like the... The tiles that decrease in value as other tiles of the same category come up become better because it's less likely that other tiles of that category will come up. Stuff like that gets really weird with the expansion. Um, I, I do want to try the other expansion. There's a, there's a second big expansion that I haven't played with. But Suburbia is much like Pulsar, which I talked about on Last List, or seven wonders on last time it's just kind of that middle of the road like comfort game for me which is why it consistently ranks high my number 18 is hanabi this game is much better online i know no i like it i like it a lot better with the dom with the the dominoes like i guess is that word like the oh the, the tiles the, the like bricks, the physical tiles, the tiles instead of cards oh, yeah the like yeah. original printing yeah it's so expensive now but bubba has it our friend i enjoy it much better with that than with the card version but i would agree with you without the tiles i would say definitely better online but it's also harder to cheat online by accident by like making reactions but i do agree that this game is as good as a, as the players that are playing it because you have to kind of you have to like really abide by the rules in order for it to be like a true game i would say i respect hanabi <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark, your your playing of this is ruined because you played online and there's this very strong meta online that's unspoken, but if you breach it, you get reamed out. 
Uh, mm. And I think that is where a lot of your negativity comes from. No, I, I disliked it before that because okay. it is a game about figuring out how much you want to metagame it and then just operating within whatever parameters you've set up with the group. So I think the discovery process of the game is very fun. So if you have a group where no one has played or heard of the game and you kind of figure out that those unspoken rules together. I think that's like the prime Hanabi experience. But once you've gone through that, I, especially now that the crew exists, I don't see any reason to ever play Hanabi because the crew, it just does the, like the similar vibe, but so much better. No, I think it's so different, but I enjoy both of them for different reasons. And it's Hanabi is my go-to. We have 30 minutes and want to play a light game. Like it is my, it is my number one game that I'll reach for in that situation. It was a very good game that to play while standing in line once when we did that. Mm-hmm. Well, when did it come out? I'm kind of curious. Does You're it break like my waiting. rules? Hanabi is 2012 or 13. Okay, thank God. Thank God. <laughs> I forget. We were waiting in line we, for like a we, movie okay, for me. We have, Maybe it was Star We have Wars. to trick Lindsay into liking a 1990s game we and then did. spring it on her that it was... With for sale. Okay, well, yeah, it's already been done. Okay, but, been done. but more... more. More? Yeah. Oh, I agree. There, there's got to be many, many more. At 18, I have Falling Sky, another great coin game. Most excellent. Yeah. That's two coin games real quick on your list. I'm yeah. going to guess and say, I'm going to guess this is your number one coin game. Okay. Maybe not. You may have it in the same order I do. Yeah. Falling Sky is fantastic. Let's go to number 17. This is... Another pre two thousands game that's fantastic that I think Lindsay likes. Anyways, also from Reiner Knizia because he was just winning the nineteen nineties. Uh, modern art. I do love this game, but I didn't know before I played it. So from, how rude that they call it modern art. They're tricking. They're tricking me. It's not fair. Modern art started like a hundred years ago, Lindsay. <laughs> Like the genre? Yeah, How was from, I art to know? From 1992 even. It's not even like on the border. Mm-hmm. It's really good though. I do like this game a lot. It's I do want to play it more actively. It's also the one of the higher risers. Again, light games moving up. Uh, moved up 16 spots for me. Uh, and it's just the best pure auction game. It's got all the auctions. It just throws them all in there. So if you like auctions, it's probably got the one you like. <laughs> The best in modern art. And I also discovered I've been playing it slightly wrong, and the way it's supposed to be played uh, is actually even better. So maybe that's also a reason it moved up because I, I do like the gallery better rules. as like an art game themed game, but I mean, they're not similar in any way other no. than that. So um, I have Mysterium, which we've already talked about, but just super fun. Always enjoy it. Yeah. It's a realist dream art. At 17, I have. The best card game, uh, Netrunner. The best LCG. Wow. I thought this would be higher. I did too, but I kept ranking it and I kept bumping it down behind things because I haven't played it in three years. Yeah. So. I've got to make I, I still think it's brilliant. I just, I don't know, after Fantasy Flight killed it or, you know, the, the whole agreement fizzled out, I just, I don't know. I, I lost my zeal to play at that point and haven't revisited, so. I am, I'm going to deliberately gain back my zeal for it <laughs> like this week so if you want to i, I want to test out some decks with some of the new cards if you want to play at any point oh. um yeah we can hop on Jintechi or something because i i promised myself i would bring decks to granite game summit which is again in like five days so i gotta, <laughs> I gotta figure out what new cards are out and like what's legal now under the new nisei rules mm-hmm. and all that but i'm excited so yeah we should do that you have 16 games better than Netrunner. That's bananas. Bananagrams. That's Bananagrams. I mean, obviously. Mm-hmm. I know Bananagrams is going to be on your list because it will drive me insane. And I'm just waiting. It's all 16. All 16 it's of all them the this in a row. Yeah. <laughs> number 16 for me is my number one coin game, uh, Fire in the Lake. Uh, mm-hmm. Falling Sky is definitely one I've played more because it's shorter. <laughs> but Fire in the Lake, I think, has everything that you want in a coin game it's so good the dynamics are just sharper between all the different factions the strategies are i feel like are really deep and it really feels like a you know wartime hellscape but in a in a fun way (laughs) 
<laughs> in a but fun, passive-aggressive way. way that you'll never play with Amber on the same team again. <laughs> yeah, well, there's certain situations with me and Amber, you know, you got to <laughs> work that will antagonize us both and we we recognize that those exist and we're just not going to beat south vietnam in the united states again it's, it's just gonna, <laughs> that's just how it's going to be 16 for me is not bananagrams it is for sale which we have already talked about oh, but yeah it defies all defies all of my auction rules and you know not being it defies all my auction rules and what i enjoy so well part of it part of it i it is like half of the game is a game that I typically would like in an auction and half of the game is not. Wait, what, still, what type of fun. auction do you not like typically? Uh, I can't remember. We're talking about um, what game was it? Um, The game that I really, really hated, The Estate. The Estates. Yeah, yeah. That was a, that was just a straight, was that, wait, no, Estates was like a once around, wasn't it? Like, I, I'm trying to think of like, so like Pyrotrix and like Middle Year or like those are, those are auctions that I thoroughly enjoy i guess okay. like open like i guess open you don't like open, like open auctions typically mm-hmm. you like simultaneous reveal auctions is what you're saying. simultaneous reveal yes yeah. and so yeah but I, this game is still so good and when we played it at whenever we played it at pax and plugged i think a couple years ago uh, i just like always wanted to play it and i think it's a great one for board game arena as well yeah it's really fun on board game arena it is very quick for sure at 16 i have space alert space alert yeah, we'll talk about that one more later. For Gotta sure. be a space team. Yeah, space alert's good. Let's discuss it later. My 15, number 15 is Here I Stand. Epic game. I, I'm really hoping to get a play of it this year and gather some people together to play it again because I'm really missing Here I Stand. But it is kind of an all-day thing, so hopefully it'll happen. Yeah, and the, I think it competes with Twilight Imperium for that s- sort of game like yeah. the all day Saturday game and we generally pick Twilight Imperium over it and there's more people that like that so and yeah know how to play it so but it's it's really amazing especially as like a negotiation game once like we're we were barely getting to the point where we knew like how and when to negotiate but as a negotiation type game on top of all the other systems I think it could be really really good Lindsay Wavelength. I just really enjoy this type of party game. I recently played it with a bunch of people that are not your traditional gamers in any way. And we're not in a great state of mind to learn a game. And they were still <laughs> able to play this game. So I think like it's still able to thoroughly enjoy it. And so I think there's just something fun about like, I also really enjoy the fact that you can like use yourself in a lot of these situations, like people, you know, to kind of like describe, you know, if something is like, hot or cold, kind of like trying to put personal references in there. So I just really enjoy this game and I think it's super fun. And I don't know if I've ever actually played it the way that it's intended by the rules and more so just kind of pass around and kind of use it as a fun party game. Yeah. I would like to play this more. I think I might like it a lot more if I played it more. You should bring it over. We have it. Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the perfect, it's like an end of the night, you know, type game. So fun. Yeah. I've never not had fun. The concept is, is very cool. And my number 15 is 1817. Ah, yes. A triumph of the 18XX series. It has loans and shorts and three different sizes of companies. And uh, it's great. It's great. Love it. Yeah. I could see this someday being my favorite 18XX because it's got so much in there. But it has so much in there and it's extremely hard to figure out what to do. I just got to play. There's a lot to unpack for sure. Uh, But in terms of like depth, it is, it is a spectacular game for sure. Number 14 for me is the castles of Burgundy. The game I'm just realizing that I compare to other games a lot. It's almost like a, like a guiding, (laughs) a guiding. I don't know what, what the metaphor is to compare other games to like, I, I, I think of it as like the quintessential medium weight game. And so, I literally, when I think of how to describe how complicated a game is, if it's around this, I just compare it to Castles of Burgundy, I think, every time. I don't know what that says about me, but I adore Castles of Burgundy. All right, next up on the list is The Crew, which we've obviously talked about um, much at length, but love a good trick-taking game. This is an excellent one. It takes it to the next level, and yeah, really enjoy it. Better than Hanabi. Everyone here agrees. Everyone agrees. 
<laughs> but both yeah. good. Both excellent games. All right. My number 14 is 1862. Oh, so there you go. You Another put it above that. 1817. Okay. Just to, they're like, oh, they were neck and neck. That was a hard comparison to yeah. make, but yeah. Excellent. Those are, those are my top two 18XX games. I'm not sure if there's anything else in that tier. Then there's a, not, there's a bunch in the next tier. We definitely, but I think those play. are my top two. Is it just 18 games for the rest? <laughs> yeah. There's 18 games in the next tier. We definitely got to play 62 next time we're in the same location. <laughs> yeah. For sure. We, we just find, need to get find like three other people to play One with more us. person. <laughs> It, it'd probably be okay at three, right? Probably. I thought it was best at five, but was it okay? Maybe we gotta, maybe we we'll have to work at it. But I, we, we, we should make that happen for sure. Number thirteen for me is Concordia, which Lindsay mentioned before, or Ryan. Yep, Lindsay and I both had it at twenty. <laughs> oh, that's right. You both had it at twenty. Yeah, Concordia mm-hmm. is fantastic. The other, like midway Euro game, Concordia is. It's hard to it's hard for me to describe to people what makes Concordia so special. It just like is what it is and what it is it does what it does as good as it can do it. <laughs> I don't know that doesn't help anything. But it, it it's Ryan, would you say Goodbye. it's a game that doesn't feel like has anything wrong with it. Like you look at it, you're like, yes, that is precisely what it ought to be. There's nothing you would improve upon it. Yeah. Ryan, would you say that we had concordance with our? Uh, yeah, we, we were in. Yeah, okay. We were in, we were in concordance on that one. Mm-hmm. Concordance. Nice. Mm-hmm. Thirteen for me is code names. So I know we didn't actually talk about it. So and spoiler, I haven't said duet yet. So oh, you're separating just them. Throwing them out there. I am separating them. I like this one. I I kind of want to talk about why I like duet better when I reference duet. Sure. Um, but I still really enjoy this game. I played it the other day. Super fun. I do still think it's a it's a decent barrier to entry for how light of weight would have a game it is. I think it is a little bit harder to explain kind of on the first go, but people generally get it after that. Yeah. But beyond that, so fun. I like the fact of having to associate words together. I do think there's a better version of this type of game. Also, spoiler alert. Interesting. So many spoilers there. My number 13 is a classic. It is Dominion. Oh, oh so good. Excellent. Excellent. Best deck we'll, builder. We'll talk about we'll that. Talk about, we'll talk about that later. Oh, yeah, for sure. Number 12 for me is Through the Ages, mm-hmm. which I think will probably, it's definitely going to be higher on Orion's list. Uh, will it remain on this list through the ages? Sure. On the top it has so far. It's been it's squeaked in and out of the top ten on my list. It debuted at seven, then went down to twelve, then up to nine, and now it back at twelve. So fun facts. Lindsay, what do you got? Nidable Ear, which we've already talked about, but obviously a newer game. I think I just played it like I played I've just played it quite a few times at this point. I played it a lot online. I think the online version is also really good for here just because of a little bit of the setup and how long that's not a lengthy setup by any means. It's not like Gloomhaven level. It does take a little bit, but I just love the combination of this game and and the uh, this is the type of auction that I really enjoy. I like that you can also kind of work different strategies to ultimately win. I don't think that one is necessarily the best overall because you have to kind of vary based on what other people are doing. I think the art is really beautiful. I just think overall this game, obviously we played it and I immediately bought it. So love this game. My number 12 is the actual best Lacerda game and that is Lisboa. Fair enough. I, I have no complaints. I mean, if I played Lisboa again, it might become my favorite. Like, it's... <laughs> it's Is your favorite Lacerda, two. whichever you've played most recently? <laughs> Honestly, probably. Between Venus and <laughs> Lisboa, it's probably... Whichever one I like best is the one I've most recently played. That's... Yeah. yeah it's probably that. Number 11, which I'm going to go on the record and say I'm almost certain is going to be Lindsay's number two, uh, is Brass... Uh, or as they call it now, Brass Lancashire, although originally it was just Brass. Yeah, I think it's going to be Lindsay's number two. I love Brass. Maybe, uh, maybe Bananagram. We'll find out later. Maybe Lindsay. Candyland. So Pirate Tricks, um, which is actually higher on this list, like, or is lower on this list than I thought. I thought I would have this actually a little bit higher up, but I always want to play this game. I think I'm always suggesting it consistently, constantly. I love trick-taking games. This is my ideal type of trick-taking game, a Trump a trick-taking game, but you also have to auction try to get the best hand. There's also many different other variables that are constantly changing in it. So I think it just spices up like a spades into something else. And I 
have so much love for this game yeah. and we'll always want to play it forever. We should we should point out uh, that we did assist in the development of this game mm-hmm. in play testing yep. and such. Fair. But I, I agree. It's very good. My number 11 is Fire in the Lake. Ah, you did put it above Falling Sky. Fair enough. I did. I agree. It's a great game. We're now down to the top 10. The nail biter. Number 10 for me was also number 10 the last two times. Okay, I guess it's number 10. Dominion, which I guess I, I think we'll be talking. Mentioning, we'll be yeah. talking. We'll be yeah, talking yeah, about, for yeah. Sure, for sure. Lindsay. So mine is a real barn burner. And by that, I mean Great Western Trail, which we've already um, already talked about, uh, I believe, right? Yeah, I I always forget you love this game this much. I love this game. I really do love this game. I think it's so good. I just want to. I like. I always want to play it, and I feel like we can never get the we can never get the troops to to rally for it consistently. But I think we still play a frequent amount. I think sometimes I win here, but yeah, it's just it just holy cow! It's a great game. Yeah, holy cow, indeed. My number ten is actually Falling Sky again because I mistyped <laughs> things when I was making my list. So, so good. Instead it's of that, I will give you a honorable mention. My twenty sixth game was Imperial Struggle. Oh, okay, very cool. Number nine for me. Orion mentioned just a little bit ago. Space Alert. I love Space Alert. Space Alert. We got more Vlada games. There are more to come. One more to come, and it's the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, i have one too space but. alert's the best space alert's one of those games we've gotten to the point i think probably we'll say for me probably starting at concordia is probably the top top tier where if someone said you know to me is concordia the greatest game of all time i'd be i'd say like maybe <laughs> it could be the greatest game wow of i'll say the top wow. 13 will be the top the absolute top tier so yeah, okay. Space Alert on some days could be my favorite game ever, but haven't played in a while. I think because at least one person has been too stressed to play, which makes sense. I don't. I also don't been. love it that much, if I'm being honest. What? I I think it's okay. Shame, Lindsay. I think it's okay. I cannot in my comprehend this. I'm alerted. No, that didn't work. <laughs> I, I shouldn't try. This, that's your. I'll game, space Lindsay. out. I'll space out for the rest of the yeah. <sighs> yeah I, I can't compete in the pun game. <laughs> Lindsay is the master of puns. <laughs> I was in fact in a band. I was in a band in um, for two days in high school called Lindsay and the Puns, and I was not the lead singer. <laughs> so if that's any context in high school. <laughs> there, wait, was was there someone, another person named Lindsay and you were the puns? No, no, I was. So we thought it was funny. This is a side story real quick. So in high school, we had to, we put together a band, a couple of us. Um, for a festival, like an art festival for one day. So we practiced the day before and then that day, and then we never banded again together again. And we thought it'd be funny because all of these bands are always named like lead singer and the blah, blah, blah. So we're sure. like, let's make it the trumpet and tambourine player as the person who is like the, the lead, the lead. And so like my friend Caroline was a singer, but I was like Lindsay and the puns, like literally the person in the back playing the trumpet, like once in the song and then the tambourine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. For me, it was me for game, yes. right? Roll for the galaxy. We've already talked about it. Yeah. Just so fun. I really enjoy dice games that don't seem like there's so much just luck. And I think that this one does the best of best of both worlds in that way. I agree. My number nine is a game that does not involve too many dice. And that is Here I Stand. Oh, very nice. There we go. Love it. There are Sorry. dice. Oh, for the the debates, right? In that game, I was trying to remember what there were dice for. I was almost going to say there were no dice because it's card driven, but then there are dice for some of the roll offs. I think. Yeah, I think so. Does the combat have dice? I think it might. Probably. I don't remember though. I think there's a, a little bit. Oh, there's very famously there's the dice for whether or not Henry the, the, the Eighth's wives get pregnant. Oh yeah, <laughs> the pregnancy dice. That's yes. right. <laughs> Uh, that's a that's a legendary dice roll. Yeah, for right. sure. Uh, my number eight, number one Vlada game is, of course, Mage Knight. I've never played this. Good choice. I mean, it's, it's coming up very soon. similar to Gloomhaven, so you might like it a lot. Okay. Like a lot of it, like the card play was definitely Gloomhaven. Definitely took a lot from Mage Knight for the the card play stuff. So. Are you implying that I like Gloomhaven? Well, I'm implying that I definitely know where Gloomhaven sits on your rankings. 
<laughs> Which I guess isn't much of an implication as a statement. Fair. Yeah, if you ever want to play Mage Knight, I will definitely teach it to you. Uh, I'm pretty sure? sure I will always play it at two players and never any higher ever again. So, All right. Whenever it's just I you could and be I. Talked into, I could be talked into three players if everyone knew the game. And we're fast players. Yeah. yeah. I could I, in, the, in that kind of situation, but I will never seek out a three or four player game of Mage Knight. But yeah, I would totally yeah. teach it to you. I, I would love to play that one again. All right, man. There's no resistance to mine being the resistance. Um, obviously, we've already talked about it with Orion's oh, yeah. time, but uh, you know, social decep- deception games are going to be really far up here for me. We have not played this in a long time, much to my resistance. We'll be forcing Orion to play this in August, so it's going to happen. <laughs> anyway. Fair enough. I cannot resist. <laughs> nope. Uh, number eight is Brass. Brass at number Oh, I've heard of her. I've heard of her. Brass. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Good spot. Okay. I, I was the one that first played this game in our group, and I played it in a pub in Scotland, and it was amazing. And then I immediately told Mark, you will love this game, and you must play it. <laughs> yeah. We do, owe, we do owe much to you. But, yeah. I think you would have you would have played it eventually. It's a classic. Um, it was on but, my yes. short list. Yeah, one of those games I'd always heard about, for sure. Number seven for me is Resistance. And it is my favorite social mm-hmm. deduction game because it's the best one. No matter what Lindsay is about Not to say. True. Uh, whenever she gets to what I think is her favorite, I have guesses, and I think they're they're just incorrect opinions. But we'll we'll get to that when when it happens. Wait, what do you think is my? What do you think? What do you think? What is the short list? I think you've mentioned this. I think I think you said you like Secret Hitler better before. Do you have any other guesses? Just curious about what you have on the rest of your list. No, no. Like, what other deception games might be above Resistance? Oh, like Social <laughs> Deduction, Battlestar Galactica, maybe. Uh, I don't know if you like it that much. I'm trying to think. Okay, we can move on. I was I just know. curious if you had other. I, if it's any, I think it's Secret Hitler. But anyways, what's your number seven? My number seven is Pictomania, which we you know, already talked about, but just so fun, always so fun. Yeah, it's good. My number seven is Mage Knight. There we go. One better than my ranking. Yep. So, you know, wrong, but only a little bit. <laughs> only right. a little bit more enthusiastic. Yeah. Number six in the lowest spot, the, the lowest spot it's ever been. Interesting. Is Twilight Imperium. I mean, it's still number six. I adore it. It's so good. And I believe I almost won last time we played. I don't think I've ever won. I don't think I've ever come worse than second yeah, you, <laughs> and you only second by one, one or two points. <laughs> I always forget to try to win, uh, which is a problem. I can't help but score points in that game. Like I just find myself naturally gravitating towards doing the objectives. Yeah. I just, I, it's I just like, I don't know. Fun stuff. I like technology too much in those types of games. I like moving up the tech tree and creating like the ultimate, like in, even in like RTSs, yeah. I'm always a turtle or at heart. Or even if I'm playing like Civ or um, any kind of those that style of game, I always like to turtle and just invest in science and technology until I have all the cool gizmos. Uh, so I tend to do that in Twilight Imperium also. Number six for me is Codenames Duet. Yeah, so why I like this one better is because I think it encourages everyone to be active for, for longer. Because I think when you're playing with normal code names, there's two clue givers. And then there's the peanut gallery, right? And so the two clue givers are really having to do a lot of thinking and the rest of the crew is pretty much just waiting for that to happen. So I think that there's some idle time where that crew is kind of like, what do we do? Do we like talk to each other? Do we have to make a conversation? Like, it's, you know, clearly it's a party game, so it's totally fine. But I think it puts a little bit of pressure on the, the two clue givers where I think in duet, you're both trying to analyze the board essentially at the same time and you're, con- you're constantly trying to reevaluate. So I think that there's, there's more of an evenness in work, I suppose, between the, in, in the game itself. And then I also like that there's a little bit of meta to it in that you have three assassins. One of them is going to be yours. One of them is going to be mutual. One of them is going to be nothing at all. You know that you have words in common. So I think there's a little bit more deduction that comes with it than regular code names. And I, I just like that kind of added element to it. I also like that it's a two-player game that I think is very successful. So I put it, I put it above because I think it's just like a... It's they're both great games, but I think that one is even just even better in how it was designed and in play. That's fair. I do find duet to be well more frustrating because that, maybe that's not the fault of the game. Mm-hmm. I do find it because the word set is more difficult. I don't 
enjoy it quite as much. It's much harder to find like three or four sized clues compared to regular code names. And I like the thrill and the risk of trying to do like a three, four or five clue, That's fair. which is why I think it doesn't make my list, but probably just barely doesn't make my list. My number six is the best Flotta game through the ages. There we go. Yeah. Can't complain. It's It could easily be there on my list. Is that this is is this in your could be the greatest game of all time? Yeah. Tier? Yep. Okay. It's the S tier for sure. Number five for me, falling dramatically mm-hmm. from once where it was at one point in time number one, it's Gloomhaven. <gasps> How <gasps> dare you? <laughs> How could you rate it any less than ten out of ten Gloomhavens? How dare you? <laughs> Do that to gloom heaven. I don't understand how you could possibly do that. I don't know. Why do you hate Isaac? <laughs> do you hate fun? Do you? Hate, I think you hate fun. I think you only want to live in gloom. That's mm, all I, I don't have. know why it ended up there. It's just what I was mm-hmm. feeling on the day I made the rankings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the top five and or top six, I would say in particular, Twilight Imperium up are like the S S. That's the bad thing to say. This this S extra. Plus yeah, sure. S plus tier, right? They're they've all been, I think, well, not quite, but almost all of them have been the top six for a long time. So it's just the the particular order is you know what it is. Gloomhaven, we got to play the expansion. You do. Again. Although I heard yeah. some bad things about it, we kind of set it really? up and then never played a mission from it. But I heard I heard some complainings about the the Forgotten Circles expansion. So we'll see. What do you have at number five, Lindsay? I know it's not. Gloom I have Haven. De- it's not Gloom Heaven. It's Decrypto because I'm not. I'm not a, uh, a heathen. So I have. Um, I have Decrypto. I think that this is. I, I love codenames. Obviously, just had Duet had codenames on this list as well. But I think, I, and I, I, Decrypto could solely be above both of those on my radar just because we have played or I played codenames so much. And I think Decrypto is still a little bit newer to me, I and mean, we also haven't played it in a long time. So I think maybe my longing, this is maybe just a cry for help for me, for people wanting to to play this game with me. But I just think it's so fun. Crypto is popular in the, the news these days. So I feel like, you know, it's just uh, right on brand. But I just think it's a little bit more clever. And I think you have to think about a lot of other factors besides like besides code names. Like you don't want the other team to try to guess what you're doing. Um, and I think there's a little bit more intricacy that I enjoy, at least innately of this. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's not on your list at all, right? No, it was lower. It was. It was there. Wasn't it? You're right. Okay. I think so. I Maybe. Think so, I think it was. I think we talked about. I it. think it was in the bottom. It was somewhere in the bottom half. Number five is dominant species. Mm, Most so excellent selection. An incredible game. So, Every time not, I play it, I'm dominant, convinced it's so. better than I thought it was. What was it's that? pretty dominant. I mean, it's at the, in the top five, yeah. Lindsay. Number four for me is Netrunner. Which you got, a, I think, a little okay. boost you because really of high. anticipating playing it and like getting it. Again. <laughs> so just hey, if I start playing it again, it it could easily jump ten spots. Like yeah. I think I had it at seven for a while. So uh, I love Netrunner, and then the Nisei cards look really cool. Which fortunately they allow proxying, so I'll probably proxy a bunch. But I'll, I'll eventually buy the sets. I think this is like the one game I've been a completionist on, so I might as well continue. I I do have all the cards, so I might as well embrace the sunk cost fallacy and, and keep buying them for just this one I, i'm limiting it to this one i will not be a completionist in any other way i do have all of the battlestar galactica expansions but that's because i legitimately wanted like stuff that was in the expansions not because i felt like i had to complete it trust me I, i'm not one of those people what do you have Lindsay? <laughs> i have dominion as number four Perfect. so yeah, I mean, it's just so good, right? This is one of the first games that I, I feel like I learned South of Spantan, I learned Ticket to Ride as like my, I mean, obviously like I played Canyon, you know, that kind of stuff, but um, then Dominion is really my third kind of foray into more inter- like no, intricate, I suppose, board games. And still my still my favorite deck builder, of, of the spoiler alert, <laughs> um, still my favorite deck builder of all time. I like how much variety there is, even within just the base game. You'll never play the same game twice. And then you can add in other de- other you know expansion packs as you want uh, to make it more interesting and add in other effects. Um, I think we played a lot of this as well over the pandemic. I think we played a lot of this just in our lifetimes. 
and we still go back to it. And I feel like we don't go back to some of those other games that I have played forever since I was young. And this is one that we still go back to and play that I've played forever since I was young. And it has a special place in my heart and will for all, it will always dominate there and have a whole dominion inside. I was going to say there was a better, there was a better, there was a better pun. pun. I appreciate you waiting for that and not speaking <laughs> until I made it. I, I was about to say it, but I was trying to think of the exact wording. Yeah. I can't, I can't argue with that. Yeah. I, I didn't uh, ticket to write. I learned a little bit later, but yeah, Catan, I learned in within the same year, I think I learned dominion. And but mm-hmm. Dominion's the one that got me hooked. Catan, I, you know, if Catan was my impression of the board, like modern board games, like it wouldn't have hooked. Yeah. Me. I would have found it as like a, you know, a fun novelty. Like, hey, this is a pretty good board game. Uh, but Dominion's the one that got me researching. Oh, you interesting. Know. Okay. Yeah. For me, number four is a former champion slipping in its old age. Twilight Struggle. Ah, I'll jump on. That's my number three. Mm. There you go. Yeah, mm. slipping just a bit. But not for any fault of, of of Twilight Struggle. There's just other games for me. At yeah. least. this is a game that I don't know. I could I could I could be playing online. But between you and I, I feel like we kind of got out of sync in our skill levels. And I spent more time learning the cards yeah. and everything. And so I got better than you and was consistently winning. And that maybe made us play it a little less. I don't know. Maybe I, I think it's just other games arrived. It does have a yeah. very good steam implementation, mm-hmm. which I, I think it's been on other platforms as well. Uh, but the, yeah, the digital implementation is, is quite good. Mm-hmm. That's my number three. It's, it's classic. It's, it's what can you say? It's twilight struggle. It's the best card driven war game. <laughs> it, just, yeah. it defines the card driven war game genre in my mind. Yeah. Definitely. Lindsay, number three. This is now let me see if I can guess because I know what your top two are. I'm almost certain. This has Banana to be things. this has to be the social deduction game. Because you said there was one you, more. You've de- you've deduced well. Yeah, what is it? So it's a tie between Guess Who, Candyland, and Bananagrams as and uh, you know, maybe an, a nod to connect four. But then, you know, beyond that, the, the fifth thing that it's tying with is Secret Hitler. You are okay. exactly correct. I was right. I just think this game is so fun. I love the premise. I love that Hitler doesn't know who his fellow his fellow fascists are, but the fascists know who Hitler is. The liberals know nothing. Like, I, I like that whole concept and then having to kind of... um. I, I just think it's a little bit more interesting to me than the resistance, but it also could be to Ryan's point. I also have played a lot of resistance and have played less of this. So I think that that po- sometimes that's a good thing for me. Like Dominion obviously played it so much summer four, but I think in this particular scenario, I like the freshness of this and yeah, it's not a secret anymore. That this is my <laughs> I, I had secret Hitler on my list before, but the more I think about it, the more I, I enjoy secret Hitler insofar as it is the resistance. Like yeah. the, the parts I like it's best about it though. are the parts that are the resistance and the, mm-hmm. and the stuff that's added on are the, my least favorite parts. So I'm like, wait a minute. I don't actually like this game. I like that. The it's resistance. 60% a game. I really like. <laughs> so it's not a, it's not a secret Hitler for you. It's a secret Dudler for you. Hitler? Yeah, sure. My number three is the other twilight game. Twilight Imperium. Mm, I'm feeling yep. this. We have, have we heard this from you, Mark yet? No. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. I can't tell if you're being serious or not, but yeah, it was my number six. No, I could. <laughs> I, I assume everything Lindsay says is at least 60% sarcasm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Maybe just shy of 70% sarcasm. Yeah, I would say. Number two for me. Uh, and this is, I don't know, maybe the biggest surprise for me. The, although it was it was number five last last time, so it, it only arose three oh. spots. But it's a dominant species, which I strongly considered putting at number one. Wow. It's it's almost there. I, every time I play it, I like it more. This is a heavy game that I really enjoyed. And I, I do like some heavy games. Um, I know a lot of my list is party games, but I do enjoy some heavy games. And this is one that I actively enjoy and would, would definitely play again. Yeah, it's it's just incredible. I, it was lower, I think. It, it was always in the top 10, but it was a little lower before, I think, just because it's kind of chaotic. But, you know, if you have players... This is a game that gets better every time you play it. Yeah, like, as it you get just sufficiently keeps invested in the game, it, the chaos becomes more restrained, and then you can kind of grasp at it, and then it really becomes a game about 
playing the other players, you know, as many of the best games are uh, for sure. And it's just the best at it. And, I, and honestly, I love how it looks. I've heard complaints about like the board, the table presence of dominant species, but I agree with that. all the cubes and cones in, in the color scheme, I, I think it looks really good. <laughs> But, you know, I'm weird like that. I'm, I, my opinions on how what games look good and what games do not is more outside of, I think, the mainstream than my opinions on what games are good and what games are not good. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, your opinions on aesthetics are more unique. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because you food, hit, food Chain Magnet as well. You, you, you and the same. And yeah, yeah, I would say I wouldn't say Dominic Speech is like the prettiest game I've ever seen by any means. I think it looks fantastic. Lindsay. Tell us about is no. <laughs> tell us about what? What is it? I, I already tell said about brass. What, I, what I thought <laughs> would be at number two. It's clearly brass. Um, yeah. I am still waiting for the Beastie Boys spinoff version, Brass Colon Monkey, but will will be eagerly <laughs> waiting for that. <laughs> Um, but this is my favorite train game for sure. What? I mean, of this, like, uh, I would, I would call it a, not like 18 X, I understand, not... but I would, I would call it ticket to ride plus in the best possible ways. What do you see about it as being, why does it remind you of ticket to ride? I mean, you're trying to connect yourself between two different locations really at the end of the day. And you're trying to achieve a specific route to accomplish a certain goal, which will then get you points. So I think es- essentially they are, I would say they're very similar, but Brass just has a lot more other like other mechanics to it of why you're trying to connect to those places and how you're scoring points. Mark is like, that's so many games, Lindsay. My brain has been <laughs> twisted here. I don't so, understand this at all. I really do think it's a stick and try plus. I, you know, and then um, like tracks aren't available because you're taken. Like, I think that this is so much, th- so much that, but Take a try plus 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 like plus because of that brass. was like fair enough. But in brass, you're not um, trying to make you're not trying to make routes. You're trying to make networks. But at the end of the day, it is a route. No, it's not. It is not if it's like spidering out in all different directions, which is what typically happens. But that can happen it's in take a drive as well if needed. If needed, it's not the best way to go about it, but it is a possibility. So I know there's like no, yeah, I I I still stand by that opinion. Skewer me, skewer me in the in the um the uh the Discord, <laughs> um. But I think it's uh yeah. I, I mean, I obviously just love this game so much, and I always want to play it. So, no, I I see your point. I mm-hmm. disagree with it, but it's making me think about brass <laughs> in a completely different way now. Orion, you were number two. This is such a coin flip for me, but I'm gonna go Gloomhaven number two. Okay, yeah, but I think yeah, I think uh, I think our number ones our are number the same. ones are definitely gonna be the same. So let's go to that. My what do you number have? one what do you and have Orion's top? number one yeah. is yep. Spirit Island, for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Confirmed. And the, and the, and the new expansion just kind of solidifies it, because there's now a whole new toy chest of fun things to play with that are way more complex, and I haven't even scratched the surface of it with the new expansion. Yeah. Every every game is unique, and it's always epic. Like, it always there's always this story arc throughout it of, like, you're building up, you're trying, you're this weak little spirit and the invaders are coming faster than you can deal with. And then if on any successful game, you get to this tipping point where you just barely staying ahead of them and then you tip over and you get your power and you win. Yeah. But that moment, that build up and the tension and then the success is, uh, it's executed better than any other game, which is why it's number one. Yeah. It's on my list in spirit, but didn't quite make, didn't quite make the top 25, but I do enjoy it. And Lindsay's number one. All right, do you want anyone has there to guess? The game that you literally <laughs> have. <laughs> yeah, it's Bananagrams, obviously. Andy uh, Lent. <laughs> no, the game you literally have made your metric for other games. Yes, of course. Gloomhaven. also have it tattooed on myself. So if that oh, yeah, is any, right. <laughs> yeah. any indication of my You also have Catan game. tattooed on yourself, though. Yes, but that's a journey. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> That's my board game journey. I mean, I've just talked about how I don't really fucking know. Um, but yes, I raise, uh, yeah, all my games are rated out of 10. Gloomhaven is 10, and every game is rated on a scale of 1 to 10 Gloomhavens. Or I guess anything to 10 Gloomhavens are probably rated things negative Gloomhaven. It's like Vast or Root. Um, no shade. <laughs> but um, all, all, all the shade thrown at those games. <laughs> <laughs> just like them. Okay, okay, Lindsay. Do you rate other things outside of board games against Gloomhaven? I I don't, but I could. But I feel like that's tough because how do you rate your enjoy, I guess enjoyment level? 
So like, can I write food against Gloomhaven? I'm not sure. But yeah, I mean, honestly, just the most fun I've ever had playing a game. I enjoy the meta that we input on it. That's not a part of the game, which is, you know, how we make up random phrases to determine how fast to tell people how uh, what initiative. turn order we think yeah. will end up yeah what <laughs> turn order we end up think will end up being uh, going in and yeah i just think it combines every possible great thing of every game that i've ever played so that's it there's the talk. top 25 from all three of us so yep. many great games go. these are all the best you should all play all of them except maybe hanabi <laughs> 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 and bananagrams it's narrowly it was 26 i swear oh really code names you should not you should no, have, no, you, no. not code names you should not play candyland you should not play candyland oh, I forgot, but, I but that was that not one yeah. was mentioned sorry i thought that yeah. was Don't, a tie for number three with you Lindsay. i don't hate hanabi <laughs> true you're, you're trolling you're hanabi. trolling number three hanabi's actually yeah, like, troll. hanabi's actually like significant to the modern history of board games yeah uh, bananagrams would not be even top top 100 if i'm being honest so if that makes you happy okay <laughs> Scrabble's probably in my top 150, Again? maybe top 200. Yeah, Scrabble's really good. Nanograms is its evil, evil cousin. You just hate fruit. That's what it is. I hate spelling things quickly. <laughs> thing <laughs> is what it is. But Nanograms isn't a bad game. I'm just the worst at it, and it makes me hate it. Mm, I think it's pretty appealing, if I'm being honest. Wow. I want to <laughs> shout out games that were once on my top 100 list and are no longer. Uh, so the highest one that fell off the list uh, was Magic the Gathering, which was number 47 last list, but was not present on my list this time. I think mostly because the last draft set I did, I did not like. And my opinion of Magic the Gathering fluctuates wildly depending on how good the current set is to draft. So, yeah, it wasn't good. Although I've heard the present one is actually better, so I haven't tried it yet. I got, I got angry at it and took a break. Other ones that fell off the list from the 70 spots are Kalis. Uh, 1303, the new version of Kalos, because I haven't played the original, in Coimbra, just because. And the game that was at one point the highest spot on the list that is now not on the list, which two lists ago, so 2018 list, was number 28 and is now no longer on the list at all, uh, is Triumph and Tragedy. Not that I dislike it. I think it was probably you know, in the top 150, uh, but just slipped off. I haven't played it, I think, in a, in a while, and my memories of it were that it was a little clunky compared to many of the other epic kind of historical games, uh, you know, like like I Here I Stand or something like that. So, yeah. There I we guess go. It, was, it was probably replaced by Three Kingdoms Redux in a way. In, yeah, in, in Churchill, I think, is aged better in terms of uh, three-player games, has aged better in my mm-hmm. memory also notables that fell off and now we have the top 20 excuse me top 100 games of all time for me and the top 25 from Lindsay and orion again all excellent games some are just slightly more excellent than the others we'll do this again in two years and maybe there'll be big shakeups. i don't know i'm always looking for games like whenever i buy a game or try to desperately play a game it's always because I think it could become my new favorite game. But I'm always trying to find new games as a crack into this top 25. Uh, but it's hard to do because these are all like Stone Cold classics. They're the best. And it's hard to make games that good. So maybe in two years there'll be some new new faces in there. But thanks for listening, everybody. To find all my reviews and everything else I do, go to thethoughtfulgamer.com. If you want to support us, go to patreon.com slash thethoughtfulgamer. You can also follow me on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram is where I'm at. And if you'd like to help the podcast, go ahead and rate and review it on the places you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening, everybody. Goodbye.